the piece was um, commissioned basically exactly two years ago um, in its original form that you saw, which is the chamber orchestra version. Um, and it was kind of a co-commission between the Albany Symphony and um, GE Renewable Energy. And GE had uh, commissioned someone to write a piece about hydropower, uh, wind power, and solar power. So I kind of just sort of movement about each and they also requested it be a concerto of some form. And then I had been wanting to write a percussion quartet concerto for um, my friends in Sandbox Percussion for a while. So it just kind of all came together really well. <laughs> um, and since then, I uh, wrote a full orchestra version that the full Albany Symphony did back in the fall. And then now this is the obviously the wind ensemble version. When you get a commission like that, it, it it's pretty specific, yes? Mm -hmm. How does that... Does that open all the creative juices or does it make you think, oh, no, I've got to find a way to express this? What, how, what's the process there? Yeah, so this is probably the most specific commission I've ever gotten. I mean, like, I'm still pretty new to the whole commissioning thing, but um, usually when you get a commission, it's like they just have a specific instrumentation in mind and like a length of piece and maybe like where it's going to be on the program. Usually there's like, oh, it's a concert opener or it's like a longer piece or whatever. But um yeah, so this was very specific, but I actually found it to be very um, helpful that it was so specific because if you have ideas to write like a percussion concerto, let alone a percussion quartet concerto, like really, really anything could be a percussion instrument when you like think about it. So it was nice to actually have like a specific um, goal in mind for each of the movements. So I remember like going to the uh, Sandbox Percussion Studio in Brooklyn and we were, just had like a task at hand, like, okay, what is, what can evoke water? What evokes wind? What evokes solar? And it was nice to have um, a goal in mind when we were choosing instruments because there are so many instruments to choose from. So you chose the instrumentation more or less before you began putting the notes on the page or how did that work? Yeah, so um, I think, uh, well, the, the first movement um, that you saw with the crystal glasses, well, actually that idea is from a percussion quartet that I wrote called Water, Wine, Brandy, Brine. And it's basically each of the percussions has a, a like wine glass in each hand. And then when you clink them together, it creates a um, dyad. It's, it's a difficult thing because it's not something they learn how to do in school. <laughs> and it's a very delicate thing because there's actually a sweet spot of getting like the perfect sound when you toast wine glasses where you get the most resonant bell-like sound. It's basically playing like a very choreographed version of patty cake with your um, with your partner there. And my whole idea behind it is that when you just have your two glasses, you only have your own dyad. But when you have someone else to toast with, you can create so many more combinations of notes and rhythms and chords. It's the whole idea behind the entire piece, not just that movement, is like uh, the power of working together. And I remember when I got this commission from the orchestra and GE, um, GE brought me to their renewable energy headquarters in Schenectady. So they brought me into this room where there's all these um, computers that control wind turbines all over the world. So in this room in Schenectady, they're controlling wind turbines in like the ocean all around the world so just struck me like how many people are working together to make renewable energy happen i, I wanted to make the piece um i wanted to make that also a theme of the piece um the idea of synergy and so the percussion quartet is always working as like one organism even though they're four soloists they're really one soloist everything that they play is um what are called pockets so it's a uh, usually it's distributed between Four of them evenly so if you don't have one of them you can't really it doesn't work so after that first movement which as i say is is such once the ensemble comes in and the sounds are so beautiful and interesting and uh, to me i was so impressed with how how many different kinds of sounds and interactions and it was just all new to me okay but <laughs> then you move to the second movement and wow okay talk about that a little bit yeah, so the second movement is basically, um, I guess I don't want to give it away too much if you haven't seen the video and if the piece will be brand new too, but they, they become a wind turbine. So it's a snare drum in the center and then four kick drums and four hi-hats. Snare drum plus kick drum plus hi-hat is basically a drum kit. It's like the essentials of a drum set. So there are these really um, complex drum set beats. In the original version of the score, there's like a composite drum set beat where it's like if you were just to listen to it, what you would hear, but then in the score, there's also the four parts. 
And when, so when all four parts are put together, it comes up with this composite. And so it's basically this really difficult beat that's split among the four of them, and which makes it possible. Because if you were to try to play this drum set beat with one person, it would be nearly impossible. So it also fits the idea of the theme that like, the impossible is made possible by working together. With, with the third movement, how much yeah. contrast did you want? How, what kind of, what thoughts drove you in that one? So last movement, the solar panel movement. Um, I remember wanting just to write like a really, like music that almost sounded kind of lackadaisical, like lazy, like you're just sitting out in the sun and watching the clouds go by very slowly. And it's a, a very long melody. It's like the longest melody I've ever written. It's just like continuously going and going for like, <laughs> four minutes or something. So it's this really long melody that's distributed between the four percussionists. So they're kind of centered around a glockenspiel. Two of them also are playing vibraphone. One of them has to play the vibraphone upside down. And then there's two of uh, the other two are playing crotales, which are these like metal disc-like instruments. Um, one of them is playing the crotale and then like lowering it onto a snare drum to create a buzzy sound. And then the other one is actually striking the crotale and submerging it in water. And then they also all play a, the glockenspiel in the center with one of their arms. <laughs> so the glockenspiel is shared among the four of them in the same way that the snare drum is shared. When I think of the sun or light in general, I think of metallic percussion, which is why we kind of chose those instruments for this. And also the vibraphone looks like a solar panel. <laughs> so yeah, I think, um, for how specific the ideas are behind the making of the piece, I think because it doesn't necessarily follow like a super specific story, you can listen to it with those ideas in mind, but it's you can kind of create your own story for it, which um, I think it's kind of great. It hits, it's like the best of both worlds. <laughs>